Hi everyone, my name is Adad Morales, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a procedural system that helps us recreate the missile attack scene from Dune. About a year ago, I did recreate this scene, but in a much more brute force way. And I'm happy to say that this system is way faster and much more easy to tune. After we're done with it, our friend Urban Bardensko is going to run with it and use Axiom to really push it to the next level. Let's get going. Okay, let's get started. So let's go ahead and create a geometry node. And in here, let's go ahead and name this uh, procedural missile paths. And this is going to be at the crux of our uh, brains for our system here. Now let's dive in. And usually what I like to do is go ahead and, and add some of our images, of what we're trying to build, just so we don't forget. And one more. I think this one would be great right here. Perfect. Cool. And we should be good to go. And I think we can go to edit and where's it tools? There you go. And control is the shortcut to turn on and off the, the edit background images. But great, we can kind of see here um, in the movie uh, the Harkonnen ship has its missile, um, you know, staging area uh, under the belly, more or less in a rectangle or, or grid uh, layout. And then it just spreads out, missiles start curving, and they hit the, the city of Arrakis here. So we're going to go ahead and um, more or less mimic the position of where these missiles would start and end. And we can do that by just go ahead and dropping a grid node. Let's go ahead and name this our source points. Bump this up to about 200 in position. So it's definitely up in uh, elevation, up in the sky, more or less above the city. And, you know, we can go ahead and just scale this up a little bit more. Get this going. And one thing is we don't need the primitives. So we just want the points. So we can go ahead and just tell it to generate points for us here. So this will be our source points, our starting positions for our missiles. Now, each of these points, we need to give them an ID. So let's drop a wrangle. And it's as easy as doing at ID equals at point number. And there you go. You can see here, now each point has an ID that we can then later link up with our target IDs and we can start creating our missile trajectories. So let's go ahead and rename this uh, create source points or source IDs. Great. And we want to do the same thing for where we want our missiles to go. So we can go ahead and do, let's do a circle actually. Let's go ahead and do a circle. Um, and make sure this is flat. And we're going to make this about like 100. And uh, since we don't really care about the normals on this, since we're actually going to scatter points, we can just go ahead and drop a scatter. Let's actually rename this to our target. Target points. Um, and yeah, this is just actually you know, create points here. We can turn off relaxation. And one thing that's usually nice is this is going to equal to 100 points. And making the same uh, amount of points is uh, usually uh, um, a common practice. Otherwise, you're just going to get points that aren't used and, you know, trajectories that aren't uh, ending up anywhere. So um, continuing, we can now see we have these guys. And we can go ahead and start merging these. So we can see them both. And from here, we can actually start dropping down an ad stop. And this is gonna create our lines. We're gonna go to polygons, by group, by attribute, and our attribute is gonna be ID. 
and it's not working because we forgot to create IDs for our targets. There you go. Target IDs. Whoops. And there you go. Now you can see more or less where where this is heading. Um, that's pretty much you know, you know the crux of this. And if we keep going, let's do a create lines and we'll rename this here. And we're gonna want to resample our lines so we can have more resolution to actually start manipulating um, the curve of these lines. And we also want to create the curve view attribute, which uh, comes for free if you put down a resample. So just toggle that on. I'm actually going to turn off maximum segment length uh, just because I don't want to resample the lines just yet. We're actually going to do this in the next step. Um, in a little bit, but we still need one more attribute from these. Go down, drop down a measure stop. And we want to get the length of each of our lines. I'm going to go ahead and just rename parameter to length just so it's a little easier to understand. And this is going to end up in the primitives. We want to promote this to points. So it's a little easier to manipulate down the pipe. Uh, primitives, original name, length, point. And there you go. Perfect. Now, just for organization, let's just rename this. Then rename this. Great. Cool. Okay. So, um, what we want to do now is actually start getting a way to manipulate each of these curves so we can actually start bending them. Uh, very similar to what's going on here in the film. And quick and easy my way to kind of start doing it is obviously we just want to work on one so we're gonna because we're gonna want to do this on every single uh, line so the easiest way is to do a for each primitive and we have our block begin and end here and if we just do a single pass we can start you know, selecting each of our lines here cool so there's a little bit of work that we're gonna be doing in here um, we got to get, you know, fun attributes like tangents, um, get some random, um, attributes, all that are going to be doing some fun stuff in an attribute bop in here. So, but one thing we really want to start with is actually giving us more resolution to work with in, in our lines and here now we can actually use a resample node. And in this case, I'm just gonna do like 100 segments. There we go. You can kind of see this here. I don't know if you guys can see this on, but there we go, if we show the number. Um, it's now made out of 100 points. Great. And um, I usually just like to do interpolating curves here just so we can get a smoother um, result at the end of the day. Um, we need to create a tangent attribute for this uh, orient along curve will give us that get this turned on and in this case we don't need the y-axis and this end is essentially our tan so and we can kind of see you know it's going down the you can barely see it but these yellow uh, lines are going down the path of the of the line cool and let's see what else all right before we get to this section i'll actually keep it going there's something we want to do here that um is a little easier to show uh after we got some most of the setup ready but um essentially is we want to make sure that our last point isn't um, affected by all the fun bending that we're going to be doing. And let me once. Right. 
Okay. So let's get going. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually skip this part, and we're gonna come back to this. It's just a little easier to explain once uh, once we can see uh, exactly what's going on. But in this case, then I will just as a reminder, I will do this and. There we go. So yeah, these these areas, you can see these three are selected. So what's going to happen up here is if we go back to our uh, film stills, essentially these missiles do come out forward a little bit and then they start curving out. And this is essentially what we're going to do um, with these with this little setup here. In fact, we can actually just go ahead and, and build it now. Um, but this is something that you can totally modify uh, on your end. You might not even need it. In my case, I just needed something that mimicked um, what was happening in the movie. So, um, so I go, went ahead and created a point group. And I selected essentially the first three points of our line via just their numbers. So 0, 1, and 2. Uh, so that's what's happening here on the base group. And then these attribute wrangle um, is going to modify that point one group and in this case um let's do start point equals zero we'll write this out and we'll see what i'm, what I'm doing here uh, and then the vector start point position is point zero get the, get the p attribute and then our start point okay and then for p on x we don't since we know we we want this to essentially go straight down i'm actually going to set point position of p and z to essentially zero so there you go You can see how this is uh the missile would come down and then start because you don't want it coming out straight out of its pipe because you, you might see clipping issues it'll intersect the ship or whatever you know you have it coming out of so this just gives, gives a little buffer um to just control that so yes i modify we can name this modify position cool and i usually just drop down to that smooth after this so then it kind of helps out smooth it out a little better. Maybe just drop this down to like 0.8 or something. Work with it. Um, in this case, it worked. And, and you know, it, most of the time it happens so fast. And then with compositing, half the time you might not even see it. So it's just a small little fix if you need it or if you don't. All right. Uh, next thing is uh, I want to make sure we're only going to be selecting the points that aren't in this point one group to manipulate to bend essentially so we will name this a group bend and this is going to equal everything but group one and there you go you can see here next let me turn off the our tangent visualizer but you can see now all these points are selected except the ones we just uh, modified and this way it just makes life a little easier to um to prepare for what we're going to do next all right so we want to start randomizing um or at least create an attribute randomize for modifying every tangent of each trajectory and then that way we kind of get all these fun little different curves and not the same curve on every single missile trajectory we're going to go ahead and continue with this as let's name this as rand rand and not random just because it makes it shorter less typing that we need to do um and we're going to want to put this under a inside sphere and then these values it's actually it won't show us here just yet but if we go here on, we 
can see our ran is now now we're getting a vector that is random cool for each position so um from here now gets into the fun stuff let's just go into uh, an attribute bot and start building uh this randomization into each of our tangents for our trajectories so they can start being uh randomized in in bend uh, values all right so we can call this rand tan let's go ahead and dive in let's move this over it gives ourselves some space and we definitely want to bind bring in some of our attributes in this case, um, clearly, ran, which we just made. And we also want to bind. And in this case, uh, make sure to set this to a vector because our, ve our rand is a vector in this case. And also our tangent. Oh. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna to want to do is, uh, first off, let's drop down a drop product. Um, remember, our random is a vector. Which so what we're gonna to want to do is essentially start finding how close one of the vectors is aligned to the other. On uh, in this case, our tangent and random vectors. And we can do that with the dot product. Uh, so we can drop one of these down, hook them up. And from here, we can actually, as simple as doing another bind export and sending out our rand again. So now this is more or less, it's a, it's a flow, it's, it's the magnitude, right? of how close are these vectors to these vectors and it goes for every point and then from here uh we're gonna actually separate this with two different point bobs just to keep it a little cleaner uh here this one we can actually start more or less putting our bend controls let me go ahead and rename this bend controls and one sec, I got to make sure this is not, I don't accidentally stop recording. Thanks, OBS. So in here, inside our bend controls, we can kind of start using what we just uh, modified in our random attribute. So we can go ahead and bring it in. We have rand. And remember, we made those other attributes of length and curve view, now we get to use them. So we're gonna bind length, and we're also gonna bind curve view. All right, cool. And we're gonna to wanna to give ourselves one promoted attribute, so we can control more or less the amplitude of our bending. So we can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. It's better organized. We can call this bend amp and bend amplitude. You'll see in a minute what, what's gonna start happening. Now we have that random magnitude. We wanna use it to multiply our, our result of our modified length. And then on top of that, we want to use a fun little ramp to control the bend shape more, uh, more user friendly, more art directable in this sense. And we also want to multiply this and that. Oh, 
So we're getting our random magnitudes from our tangents that we calculated. We're going to be multiplying them by the length of our trajectories, as well as then a user band amplitude if we want it to be stronger or weaker. And then on top of that, we're trying to multiply all of it by the curve view attribute. So then we can actually start uh, using a ramp to change the, the shape of our uh, trajectory. And then all this in the end gets added to our positions. And there's actually one thing I did wrong here. This needs to be a vector. Otherwise, we're just going to get one direction and that won't help us. Okay, cool. So, bend amplitude. Let's just keep it at 0.5. And our ramp, let's go ahead and make this a hill. Oh, boy. So, you're probably wondering, oh, that doesn't look smooth at all. And it's because we forgot one thing. Remember how we were creating our IDs way back up here? And then, because these are now... Uh, primitives IDs under points but we want an ID from this attribute randomize our ID we want this to actually be we want the seed to be the same for every point in its own respective primitive but obviously different for all the rest of the primitives and it's as easy as toggling this little guy on seed attribute id so remember it's now using all the the same ids whoop so if i go down here you can see a lot of the points that are associated with primitive one two three are all have the same id so they're going to start sharing the same noise as seed and there you go you can kind of start seeing this working already so let's keep this here and you know, you can start messing with this a little bit. We can start changing the, the type of interpolation we're using. Maybe B spline might be better in this case, who knows? But you can start playing with it. There you go, you know. Cool. And if you want a little more bending amp amplitude, those, those are there. Now, if we go down here, hit for each, boom, you can kind of start seeing the result of what, what this does. And there's a couple improvements we can do to this as well. Um, we can really see if we can maybe not have it occur in some of these spots. Sometimes it's just a matter of either moving these, like that's kind of, that's like really weird down here. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's go back up to our RAN tangent. And let's see what else we can add to here. So we know this is going to be more or less the magnitude of the direction. Um, but let's say we want, let's see, we want to multiply our original vector tangents and make sure this stays as a vector and then and if we plug that in instead we're going to get different values here aha uh -huh. so now it's weaker right and it actually looks like it's only happening up up here at the top So we're multiplying our tangents and our tangents we remember in this case are all looks like they're all negative but let me put down a subtract and i want to now subtract all the random values that we've injected into this Okay, now this is giving us something way more interesting. You can see down here, all those weird issues that we were seeing are gone. 
Now, what? Ha what? So what's like? What's happening here? So remember, this is our magnitude, and we have our tangents. We're essentially multiplying those tangents again by its own, by the own, the magnitude where it shares the relationship to our random vectors. And in this case, you know, it's, since they're going to be sharing uh, a similar seed, if we actually maybe be able to visualize this a little easier through here. This is actually the rand uh, per, per primitive. But let me see if we can. Okay, this might. Yeah, this might help. Okay. So if we go up here, go ahead and let's do a bind. Uh, actually, let me let me see. Let's do a bind export on just the multiply. Now let's do a vector and debug dot mult. Okay. Go back down here outside. Let's turn off our rand and tan really quick. Turn this on. And we can also, let's just do this. So we can see here, what are our, our values? For, they're all really, really small. Right here. So not a lot of movement um, and why it'll, it'll stay pretty, Oh yeah, so that's all changing. So the difference though, right here between this and this is how those values now can actually be higher. It's more or less shifted. So then we can kind of see more change when we actually start using this these, this modified value. So if you go back here again, you're going to get the same value for every single one. And then over here, because we're starting to multiply the tangents, the tangent is going to be different for each position. And then you're subtracting. Well, sorry, because the tangents are actually more or less the same. That's why we're not seeing a lot of movement here. But then once you start subtracting those random values, random vector values, proceed now we get to see something um more pleasing and you don't get the the weird end values down here um that are essentially exploding when when you're just piping in the dot result the magnitude result okay so i'm gonna run with this We can keep this here for now and you can start modifying the amplitude and you can do something like this. Okay, cool. All right. And just do a little bit of organization and there we go. All right. So we're almost there. And the one thing we want to do actually here is start updating our lengths again so now that they've been bent and deformed their, their lengths are gonna be slightly different so let's just get a new clean attribute and what we're gonna do next is actually start cutting these lines and in this case we're gonna want to convert this and make sure everything uh is just clean and then right here Okay. Fantastic. All right. So here comes the fun part. Um, okay. Essentially, we're going to do a for each again. Let's just do a single pass. 
And then from here, we're gonna get some wrangle code going. So what we're gonna do here is essentially start controlling when our missiles start moving and when they essentially stop and have an offset for us to be able to art direct essentially. Because we don't want them all to start at the same time. We wanna you know, shift it like they're offsetting, just like what happens in the movie. Like are these missiles that you know they don't they randomly actually come out um, from their positions at a different uh, time. So then we can get all this nice uh, separation and lag of missiles behind. So let's call this uh, time time wrangle. Cool. All right. So we also want to before we do that actually let's create a meta import node here because we're gonna need uh, every iteration of our primitive. And it, just so we can start storing that, let's start moving it in here. So we're gonna integer enter iteration equals detail. Want it from first uh, input, which we'll hook up in a minute. Iteration zero and then closing. So let's hook that up there. Great, so that's that's good to go. And now we can actually start writing some of our time attributes. So we're going to need the frame. In this case, I'm going to make this a parameter that we fill. Uh, because if you do at F here, um, it'll essentially, or sorry, not at it, but dollar F, it'll complain that there's a performance issue. And one way around it is just to feed it differently. So. We're gonna feed it that way. We're gonna make another float for start frame. And let's do an integer start frame. We're gonna do a float end frame. Again, integer end frame. And now we need our offset controls. We're gonna do float start offset equals. Now we want our offset to be random for each trajectory because otherwise you're just offsetting all of them to the same frame and that that doesn't really help so what we can do that's why we made this the iteration attribute we can actually use that as our per primitive or trajectory randomize and then multiply that by our start offset now we do the same for a end offset. Let's get that iteration. F end offset. And now we also need our cut attribute. And this is going to be crucial. And this basically will tell the missile when do I start moving essentially. So you'll see this working in a bit, but you're gonna wanna grab your start frame that we wrote and add it to your start offset. And same with the cut, cut end equals end frame, add it to the end offset. Cool. And because the cut, the way it works, the curves are, are using a, uh, Normalize values or normalize length of zero to one. We need to essentially normalize our values here. And we can do that by doing a float normalized cut. I, we're going to clamp it just to be extra careful. Cool. Maybe I should spell clamp correctly first. We'll do a frame minus the cut start. Close that and then divide this by the cut end minus the cut start. Oops. And we're going to put zero, point zero, bit it between these two. And there you go. Oops, it looks like this broke up here. All right, fantastic. And let me double check sure. 
Hope this is still recording. Great. Okay. Um, here we go. So now we have all this. We can actually hit our parameter initializer here. You can see all the fun little controls here. Now on F frame on frame, we want to actually do dollar sign F. This will actually give us the frame number and we won't get a, a little warning message saying that we're using dollar f in our wrangle code so there you go and then in our case yeah you know we can start putting a we want this to start at frame 25 uh, maybe end at frame 120 and we're gonna offset uh, um, oh actually sorry whoops frame 25 and at 120 and we're gonna offset it by I don't know 50 and then maybe like 100 and then so you could probably end up flipping these around just so it makes it easier uh, to understand and we can do that via here put these guys like up here and there you go cool all right so now we have attributes um, for our missiles and when they start and, and stop we also need to now actually write out these attributes for our cut. So we're gonna do a dollar F, or sorry, not dollar F at cut, and um, that's gonna equal our normalized cut. And we're gonna want the integer attribute as well of start F, our start frame, and we're gonna get the integer of cut start. We're gonna do the same for End frame and you're gonna see we're gonna we're actually we're actually gonna be using these for our explosions later because we need to trigger explosions when the missiles get to the end of our curve okay excellent so uh, in this case these cuts are in float we need to actually start promoting these, the, our cut attribute back to a primitive level. So let's go ahead and promote because the next stop that we are going to use uh, needs it in a primitive level. Great. And then I believe you can set this to mode just so it doesn't do anything and then straight promote it. But I might be wrong about that. Um, Next is actually use our extract point from curve. And this is the magic right here. So our curve disappears, but we have a distance attribute and a cut value. Distance attribute is actually our curve view in this case, which we made way back up here in the resample. Uh, yep, right here. And if we go back down, this cut at, we can use an attribute value and we're going to use cut. So you can see that one of these points now popped up and look what happens once we start moving out. Oh, actually, let me make sure y'all, there we go. And remember we told it to start at frame 25. So now once I pass 25, In this case, this one's offsetted. So this one is is actually Yeah. It's offsetted by 50, so you're going to get it starting. So actually you have the end frame here. You're actually going to get to start at 45 it looks like based off whatever iteration random value it's it's grabbing right now so there you go and you can see the cut value here changing from zero all the way to one fantastic okay cool um now the only other thing is for And let me double check one thing. We're going to put down an orient along curve because what we want from, from our, whoop, not from our point, but from our curve is to send this, send the, our normal data essentially 
to back to our point that way our point knows what direction to face when let's say if you want to copy a mesh a missile mesh to this it makes our life easier um, in this case uh, I think I ended up just using central different I just need a uh, the normal or tangent in this case and I essentially just did a attribute transfer oops And I think that that's really turn this off. Yeah, I think that's all that I did in this case. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, you can see the normal there on our point. Great. All right. From here, I can go ahead and just color code this just so it's uh, we understand that, hey, this is our moving, you know, missile point, I guess you can call it. And just make it out of a green. Nice. almost there so we got essentially if we turn this off there we go all of our points they're they're all this there you go they're not starting moving until frame 25 which we specified here and once you start scrolling they all start coming down and then just stop when they hit the bottom great so the next part now is to actually get this to, and we can actually make these way smaller now. Get these to actually turn red when they hit their target points position, essentially. And we can do we can do that with by you know going back to our target points, but we want to. This is really for we so we can understand when to instance an explosion here. And this will just make your life easier because then you're not having to manually put explosions um, in the positions and keyframing when you want them to go off based off the the missiles hitting. So we can go ahead and put this um let's call this target points to match. And in this case, I believe we should probably also, we can put a rest position. So we can create a rest position attribute here. Perfect. And now we're just going to need another wrangle. And I guess a little bit of more code. We can keep going. And let's call, let's call this like contact adder okay right on right on cool so let's grab our rest attribute that we we uh we just made over here we're gonna go vector and rest equals point attribute from the first well in this case from the second input because the inputs go from zero to to three so it'll be one rest is what we want and give us four the four number that's currently on cool now we're just going to do some if it else statements here um in this case we're gonna see if it matches just the Y attribute. This needs to be, you can you can probably just do this with a, a regular P. In my case, I was finding some weird result if I just had set um, like at P equals rest. But actually, let's see, let's see if it works right now. Uh, we're gonna do an integer, so if 
the position is equal to the rest vector. Make a make an in, a new attribute and call it contact and equals one. And let's change the color of our points to red in this case. Oops. And then if we can do a we just close bracket here. Whoops. There we go. We can do an else. Again, set our contact to zero. And that should do it. Okay. So this is what I was trying to explain. Um, this is probably a precision issue. Um, wasn't even sure. How to fix it but in some cases a lot of these points are not um, turning red so i had to essentially use just the y attribute because i knew those were going to be always uh correct because if we actually go back up here and we look at our positions If it equals zero in this case, right? And then if we go to their point positions, some of these, let me see if I can go to like zero. Um, yeah, it's, I, I'd imagine it's a either a precision issue going on. In some cases, like some of these are fine, right? But you'll have to find the numbers uh, or the points that are, are not so. Okay, well, that's how I fix it. Um, if you obviously have a different um, shape, something that's more 3D or something, that's going to get a little tricky. But um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to leave it here and, and we can continue moving forward with this. All right. So, next stop is going to be essentially we can name this to be either yeah we can let's just name these contact uh, oh missiles ready points excellent okay we're going to go ahead and save last thing we want is our project to crash but there you go. We now have a way to manipulate uh, where is our time when we want things to start. Again, I can start this at you know uh, frame three, and look, they're already already moving, doing their thing. Boom, boom, boom. Um, we can modify the shape of our trajectories. If we want to go crazy, in this case, we can go here. And we could also then, if we want, over in our randomized attribute, adjust the seed. And all of these can be promoted, obviously, to a nice little control um, node or like null that you expose all these and connect these uh, expressions to. So. Um, and then, yeah, you could also control the amount. You could change the seed of the target points, and that'll just update. And then, yeah, again, just uh, how many of these missiles you want in this case. So. We are now going to continue. We got most of the heavy work done. And let's go to back to our object level and we're going to go ahead and make some more or less preview um, geometry so we can kind of see this in action so i'm going to call the sim impact explosion 
gonna make it, you know, nice orange. Um, I'm gonna also do a geometry. I think we want a sim for our missile trail. And do the same. And so let's go ahead and dive into explosions first. All right. So this is essentially, um, you know, we can put down a, um, a sphere. But this is going to be, we're going to be using a sphere as our, you know, pseudo temp explosion, our previs explosion. So we can see what's going on. We're going to go ahead and do this. Let's, um, Let's go ahead and actually just keyframe this. Oops, not there. From, uh, let's see, where do we want? How big do we want this guy? We like, started at zero and then about frame, maybe frame 12. He can go up to size 50 and save that. Cool, okay. And we're going to go ahead and give it a color. And, you know, I don't know, call it red or something. Um, or maybe just like orange. Doesn't matter. I'm just more of a whatever your taste of explosion colors is. And we're going to mess with the alpha of this as well. So we can have it appear like it fades out. And in this case, we just do something quick. Um, I don't know, just make the alpha channel a parameter. You can see this. And then in this case, we can do um, one at frame one. Oh. Yeah, and then frame this because then it'll grow and then let's do what 20 maybe 25 it goes down to zero okay commit awesome okay and you know so the alpha of the mod let's go ahead and file cache this and it's a like previs explosion sure and yeah we can go ahead and just we don't have to do all frames so we can do we can do um, what was it up to 25 I think we did it yeah let me just do like 30 I think that should be fine and we can go ahead and just uh, save Save to this, we're good to go. Fantastic. And if, uh, let's see. Yeah, just clamp it to the last and you're good to go. Excellent. So now that we have this, this is essentially where you're gonna want to, you, you can, if you want, make your explosion sim, um, you know, fire up Axiom, uh, let it do its thing. Uh, following this tutorial, go check out Urban's. Um, we actually uh, are working on this together, and I was like, "All right, Urban, you're gonna go ahead and do all the fun, you know, sim uh, magic with this. I'm just gonna give you the setup." Uh, which, funny enough, this setup is actually brand new to uh, compared to what I had really originally done over a year ago. Um, the old setup was way more manual. Um, it was a little, little painful. So. It was really cool uh, to just go in and, and try to rebuild this in a, a way easier procedural way. So, cool. So, with that done, and we'll get to the missile trail in a minute, um, let's go ahead and drop down another geometry node. Let's type, uh, let's call it render uh, explosion instances. And this is where this is gonna get uh, really crucial. All right, so we want to get those contact points or our missile ready points um, that we originally generated from our procedural missiles. So if we go up here, you can see missile ready points 
accept that. Dive in. Okay, excellent. So we got that. We're going to want to, um, because these are explosions, eventually, if you're just going to instance one explosion, um, you know, it'd be nice to have them at least rotated uh, differently so they don't all look like the same facing explosion toward you. So we can do uh, an attribute randomize. And we can do a orientation because these are points. We got to give it the orient attribute. Uh, we can do a direction or orientation. You can just bias it toward Y in this case. So it'll rotate on Y. And, and with that, you should be good to go. So the next step is to actually start creating a fun little control. Um, to understand when to instance these uh, explosions. And this is gonna take a little bit um, right here, but once this is done, it's it's essentially uh, good to go. But we wanna make an instance attribute that has the path to our explosion and, and as well as um, just understanding when to, A, when to, when to play it and when to end it, so. This actually, uh, if you guys want more uh, information on this, this came from, some of this knowledge came from, I think his name is, um, Tom Van Helsding, he's on YouTube, or sorry, Tim, Tim Van Helsding, Dingen. But he had a pretty cool uh, video on how to uh, instance caches uh, and just do a Google or YouTube search on them and um, I'm sure it'll pop up but shout out to him for this uh, knowledge uh, this was extremely helpful helpful uh, in just making this process a lot easier so um, he goes into explanation on on the wrangle here but I'm gonna kind of just more or less go a little faster um, for the sake of time. So go check out his video if you want a little more detail. So the way we're going to do this is writing an instance path attribute, uh, specifically because we're going to try to use, well, not try, but we are going to use our instance path SOP. And you can see here, instance at attribute, we essentially got to fill this attribute with a path to our temp explosion cache, our previous cache that we just did. So we're going to go ahead and, and do that. We can create a string path. That's where that's where our string for our uh, explosions are going to be. Um, we're going to want integer v. This is going to be the version. So depending on if you have a versions of explosions, you can it'll be able to um, you'll be able to choose which one you want. If you want a string. Oh, and then we'll just make sure make version of string here uh, we want to get we're going to want to get um, the frame we're going to want to make sure that our frame is less than that end frame and then we're going to do a couple of brackets here Frame equals zero or zero. And then we're gonna do an else. Frame equals frame minus end frame. And then we're gonna wanna just clamp F. In this case, from one to twenty, or however long our 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 explosion simulation was, I think ours was thirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it there, and then we're gonna just start building our strings to essentially tie together, so we can get our path directly for our attribute. String extension. This is the extension, so it's going to be a pgo.sc. 
and next thing you want is a pad frame, any padding, sprint F. This is gonna be this fun little uh, expression like this, I believe. And then we're gonna do a couple more frame. And so now if we do a string frame equals frame and string instance path equals from cat all these strings together not path but path and the path frame and the extension let's see okay but if we go here instance path you can see and don't forget to hit your parameter initializer. But you can see here, you can start getting uh, all the different, uh, the frames, the extension, and obviously the version number if we just set that up. So uh, in our case, uh, we, let me find my drive where we have saved this cache. Okay. So we can go ahead, grab this, paste it in here, and you can see the the path like instantly updates in this case. Okay. Sorry about that. So it basically was just the fact that we didn't have underscore v here at the end. And so now we actually get versions and numbers uh, changing correctly in our in our instance um, instance path. Cool. All right. So uh, with that now ready. Can actually go ahead and do a delete. Oh, not a delete, but an attribute delete. Just to clean some things up. We don't need, um, well, we need position, normal. We can keep our color and we need our instance. So that just helps clean and, you know, simplifies this up a little bit more. All right. Cool. So now in this case, you can see this is doing its thing now. So that first explosion you saw here was just that our, our initial sim. Now you can just hide that. But now our render explosion instances, when our missiles hit the ground, they get referenced and, and there you go, they play and they'll play um, yeah, they'll play, uh, the cache, you know, when it starts and, and it just keeps going until this finishes and nothing is, is offset or, or weird. Cool. All right. So the next part, um, in this case, we can just do, let's do another geo we're going to call this render missile missile geo and this is just as simple as uh going in here and and creating a, a missile mesh um in my case i'm just going to quickly copy and paste something i already built just so you guys don't have to watch me model in houdini So here we go. Here's our fun little missile. I'm gonna merge our missile points again from our procedural geo. So back up here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put down a delete 
And what we want is, since we have that contact attribute in here now, I want to delete these points when my contact attribute is equal to one. So as I move and they hit the ground, they just disappear. And that'll take the mesh with it. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the points. We have our missiles pointing in the correct direction. They're doing their thing. They start moving down. Pretty cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, give them a different color so they're not just using uh, something, maybe something more bright. and this is where you can get you know fancy and in, in, in my case I actually went ahead and grouped uh, some of the faces up here made an engine group and I went in and got my engine and I deleted not not selected and oops but you can kind of see now these uh, these circles these planes right here essentially can be you can poly extrude them and make them um, a light source essentially i'm just gonna you know just whatever you're if this is a a, a way you want to do it but essentially you can then in in karma just tell it hey make this material or this a geometry light and and just make it emissive so then you have a light on each of these missiles glowing so cool and I'm gonna go ahead and do a null. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a missile geo. And there you go. So missile geo, geo uh, is complete for now. And the next and final step is just gonna get the this missile trail going. So missile trail. There's a couple of ways to do this and um, I'm sure Urban might show a, a completely different way. Um, but the idea here is essentially to create uh, source points for for our smoke missile trail. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna do it a little differently where we're gonna actually create And let me see, at a point, here we go, great. We're actually gonna create our source points in and inject the velocity here rather than use, you know, the actual, either the point or any surface geo on the on the missile. You can, totally way to do it. Um, this is just, you know, what I found um, a way to do it. And so here's just one method and yeah let's dive into it so i'm gonna get make a brand new point uh just an add stop and we're gonna add one point I, I am then gonna use a point replicate and we're gonna do some couple of things with this um, i'm gonna crank this up to about a thousand and this fun little tab shape kind of gives us everything we need we're gonna make a cone out of this and in my case we can make our cone a little skinnier and we definitely want it a little bit um, bigger and we can start throwing some noise in here this is going to help um, just break up the shape and we can actually start putting a dollar f um, so we can make sure it changes every frame and we can actually reduce the amplitude and crank up the roughness and now you kind of get this going. Cool. Now, the only other thing is it's not pointing in the right direction. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, actually, can we actually do it in the shape? No, we can't rotate it in the shape, but we're going to go ahead and rotate it here with a simple transform. And from here, 
we can go even add some more uh, noise to the position of our points and we're going to do vector attributes we put p and zero this cranks up zero center let's do the three um sparse convolution it's my favorite offset let's put every frame offset it and i think that's all we need for this but oh. so yeah we get something really erratic and we're gonna actually now start modifying the shape of this a little bit more with the point block. So drop down a point block, dive in here, and we're gonna do something simple with a, with a ramp. Um, okay, so to do this uh, properly, we're gonna wanna get the bounding box of our points. Essentially this, and we're gonna wanna fit them Get their minimum, maximum. Make sure this is a negative one. And next, we're gonna wanna do a vector to float. And we're gonna get our ramps, ramp control here. Remember, we just wanna control it on in this case, the Y. Or, or as the main control and everything else will get multiplied by that ramp. And if we go back to a float vector, we can then go ahead and connect this back here so there you can see nothing nothing's happened but if we do a linear there you go you can kind of see what we're trying to go for here and we can actually start raising this up a little bit more and there you go something to just control that that tail um, emission source and then from here, it's just a matter of adjusting uh, values for for uh, our, our uh, sourcing. Um, in this case, we could definitely do p scale. Let me do one sec. We need to set always is the operation, and we want it by bounding box. And then this way, if we actually view this, we can actually start controlling the edges of our, our points and the, their values. I think you can actually, uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. We can control the bounding. Now, the thing is, we actually don't want this on the x-axis. We want this on the y-axis. So we can start controlling their scale toward the, toward the tail end of the system. So because p-scale is going to, uh, you know, it'll affect how much density, um, temperature, like all the values that come with it. Um, Oh, that we're going to be adding after this. So let's go ahead and add those. Adjust float. Um, in this case, we go. Let's just do name this density. Uh, let's do set always by the bounding box. And we can actually visualize this again. And so not p scale, but by density. And OK, that's fine. Same thing we wanted on y. Uh, we keep that at zero. Maybe do three. So it'll be more dense here than it is up here. And yeah, we could just continue doing that. OK, 
Okay. For velocity, we want to put this on noise since we kind of, we want, um, Velocity is obviously a vector, so we need to actually adjust a vector. Okay, cool. We got noise. Put this like 2.5. Mess with the elements a little bit. Okay. And we can actually see the values of those as well. If we turn off density, there's temperature, P scale. Velocity. We're gonna we're gonna be adjusting these in a little bit, but let's just do it on also the y-axis. Cool. Um all right, let's keep going. Now these are essentially the source points for the rocket engines. Um one thing you could do is we can go back and go to object merge, go bring our missile ready points, essentially start copying this setup to our points. So there you go. Now, we forgot one thing. We're gonna fix their orientation again. If we go here, Whoops, let's see. And this is, yeah, not up here, but down here. This could be a negative 90. And we can maybe nudge it a little bit. And there we go, now they're all pointing in the, in the right direction. And we can do other things. Um, here in this this transform right after our point bop we can maybe stretch it out make it skinnier like this and then maybe make it longer I you get something that will definitely help okay now Next couple of things we kind of want to do is um, try to remedy some of the stepping that this is going to occur. Right now, if you play this back, um, especially once you're using this as a source, you might get stepping in those uh, volumes. And there's a way to fix this. I'm going to go ahead and make an attribute here, call it ID and use the point. So we can see here, point ID is essentially the, the point. Um, and we can actually make this an inch. There you go, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put down a pop net. Get this going. I'm gonna go ahead and put down a pop drag. And I think that's, yeah, that's all we really need for this. But if we go back to our source input, make sure to change your source to all points. 
and we want our birth. I believe we want the jitter time to be negative. Interpolate backwards. And just have to see our life expectancy. We got to make this really low because we don't want it to hang around too much. And we can basically start also inheriting the velocity of our trajectory and just give it some variance. Okay, cool. There you go. I'm gonna go up here, I hit play. They're doing their thing. Remember, they don't start moving until frame 25. And there you go. Now you get to see all the fun streamers essentially coming out. Cool. And that's another thing. Um, the fact that they're starting before they, they need to actually start, we could just go over to the simulation, start frame, and then just put it at 25. And that's something that you can, you know, uh, copy and paste the relevant reference to some control that you have back up a level up that controls and updates all of this. So, um, one thing we want to do is compute the velocity for this. Just make sure it's clean. Oh, so I usually just do a trail stop here. And the other thing is we need to control the values of our divergence, density, P scale, temperature, and all that. Right now they're they're essentially just set to what they are and they're gonna be set to that forever. So what's gonna happen is if I fast forward more or less to the end, the values are still gonna arrive at or essentially just stay set at at one essentially so you're going to get some weird you're going to get when these hit you know become red this is still going to be emitting so um this is where you kind of start controlling the values from a wrangle and you can just keyframe them and and um essentially tell it hey before the frame the start frame attribute and then after the end frame basically don't don't have any value set your values to zero so we can do that with an if and we're going to grab our start f attribute and we do our channel get our frame and then we can go ahead and do the density equals at density and divergence so remember this is this is uh just just keep using what we has initially set it to. And we get a temperature. Is that temperature? And then we're gonna do an else. Oops. Gotta close this bad boy. And then reopen it. Else. Density is zero. Divergence is zero. Temperature is zero. And close that. And then the same thing for our end frame. So at end frame, less or equal to frame. We're just going to use the same uh, parameter here. Again, set our density to zero, divergence to zero. P scale to zero and temperature to zero. Cool. And you can just do this with P scale and that, that would probably affect all the values here, but this is just a you know, fail safe just to be extra, extra sure that nothing is being pumped into, into the system. And in this case, um, it's just gonna check which frame it's on. So we just wanna give it dollar f so cool all right so we can do this like modify modify you know volume attributes perfect okay and and then you can see 
from here, we can start rasterizing these attributes. We're going to go here. Uh, I'm going to grab basically, let's see, that's density, it was temperature, divergence, and velocity. Cool. And yeah, I mean, give this a minute. So there you go. You can kind of start seeing this. And we can start messing with some of this coverage values, maybe temperature. So we can play with that in a minute, but now you can see that our volumes are, are here. And if you're using Axiom, you're going to want to rename uh, divergence to pressure. So our divergence group, there you go. Rename this to pressure. Oops. There you go. Cool. All right. And from here, um, yeah, uh, that's that's the gist of it for, for sourcing this. And here you go. It, see how now we're before our sim even started, we can. Nothing's essentially starting before then. So you're you're good to go on that front. And this should hopefully also fix the any any stepping issues. Um, Cause we're, we're more or less blurring our our um, sources when we're doing our pop net. And yeah, you can you can definitely turn on this velocity blur to see if it, it helps a little bit more but it tends to, uh, um, it's doing something weird there. Yeah, like that. So I'll keep it off for now, but hey, maybe Urban has a fun trick to use with that. So we'll see. But um, yeah, even we can see a preview of this, essentially, I drop him down an Axiom solver and actually let me rewind all this just so it's not there we go now it's calculating and I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on GPU okay we're good to go I think it'll just do it now and I will just make sure yeah that's that's fine just for honestly for testing purposes right now So this is three maybe okay and start frame so same thing right we can actually set this to 25 and there should that should be it i'm gonna keep the division uh, a little uh, higher so we have less uh resolution so this can run a little faster and we can do a voxel size here and link that and we can do maybe a particle scale four point four. So if I play this back, there we go. It's now doing its magic. Check it out. Kind of looks uh, pretty similar. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, this uh, I'm going to be handing over this file over to, to Urban, and he can uh, show us you know, how to go crazy and awesome with Axiom. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is a million times faster than my original setup. Uh, original setup, I wasn't doing a procedural. Uh, set up so I was doing something completely different where instead um, I was rendering out one trail and then I would deform that volume that single trail 
per primitive. So I would grab each of those primitives that we have for those trajectories, and those would be a volume um, curve deformer, essentially. And I had to basically run caches for each one. It took a long time, and it was just nowhere as fast as just, you know, letting it actually use all these different sources um, for for the simulation, so. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Um, let me go back up a level. I'm actually gonna go ahead and let's hide this. And we're gonna go ahead and do a, a render geometry. And this can be missile trails. We can make this guy red as well. And we do an object merge. And I'm basically gonna, in this case, you oh, don't need a merge, but yeah, you would just do like a file node and, and load in your, um, your simulation. So, and then you can essentially have all these ready to render and good to go. But that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and, and actually, let's just do this. Missile trails, procedural. Let me make sure we can actually do like a fun, um, here we go. Visualization of this. But essentially, now I can you know, make a shot cam here. We can more or less start, whoops, positioning our camera to do something, something like a movie. Just start keyframing things. Once these bad boys go down, you can you can then really um, I think it's this. Yeah. And we start seeing the magic do of uh, of the system doing its thing. So there you go. And hit play, and there they come down. And oops, before I do that, turn on those explosion instances. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. So like a missile command. <laughs> so awesome. Um, yeah, I'm next steps for this will be, you know, Urban's gonna be sh showing us some fun um, explosion setups, maybe it's uh, better missile tra trail uh, simulations and just, um, yeah, what else uh, What else we can come up with? Um, in terms of rendering all of this, basically my old setup was in Karma. And I'm not, a good, I'm not gonna go over it just yet, um, but essentially, yeah, you can just start bringing in these in, in Karma. You can definitely use um, the Pyro XPU. Uh, to render out your missile trails and obviously the explosions and and yeah really there wasn't too much of it um, again i mentioned in our missile geo we had our engine lights and these were pretty helpful into just slapping material in karma um, or even just using them literally as a geometry light and and letting them do their thing but cool um yeah thanks for uh giving this a, a listen and watch um Hopefully this might be, you know, first little start for more movie shot um, recreations. Um, you know, this is this was really fun, and you know, the first time I saw this, um, it was absolutely uh, entranced and was ready to like, okay, I need to go do that. So, yeah, um, if there's any other movie ideas, let me know, guys. Um, and yeah, this was uh, this was a pleasure to do. Cool. Uh, thank you.